call the meeting to order. This is a regularly scheduled, called and convened uh, Greer City Council meeting held April the 9th, 2024. Having called the meeting to order, I'd like to ask Councilman Lee Dumas, if he would, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and then an invocation for Council. Join us, if you wish, by standing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this night that you've given us this day. Thank you for this council, this great city that, that we get to live in, for the staff that serve our city, and, and for the people that live here. God, continue to, to bless and enrich as, and, and empower us as we serve. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ms. Munoz, anybody to appear in public forum this evening? No, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Council, the minutes of your um, council meeting on March the 26th, 2024, contained in your packet. I'll entertain a motion that they be received. So moved. Second. And a second. Any items of note for the clerk? Hearing none, Ms. Munoz. Mr. Arwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mrs. Albert? Yes. Mayor Daner? Yes. Council, we have a uh, special recognition this evening. We have with us some of the 2024 City of Greer juried art show winners. Robin Bayuk, who is our cultural arts supervisor, will join me tonight as uh, we recognize some folks who participated in the art show and uh, have received awards. Give 
Please, folks, a round of applause. <laughs> he might, he might win next year's award. <laughs> It's it's always good to recognize our, um, our our winners, whether or not it's a, a juried art show or if it's a, a youth wrestling program. And uh, we, we like to take those opportunities to recognize those folks in our community that are participating in um, all sorts of events that we sponsor. And um, we are always glad to um, to. Uh, to recognize those those people that are participating in our programs and uh, are achieving uh, awards of, of any kind, and so we we like to bring them in from time to time. I think that you would find if uh, if you had the opportunity to walk through this building that uh, a fair amount of the uh, juried art is uh, hanging actually in in this building, and uh, we like to uh, we like to acquire some of that art from time to time when we're able to do it. Mr. Merriman, it's time for the administrator's report, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, just a few quick announcements on the fun things to do in Greer side. Uh, first is auditions for Greer Idol and Greer Idol Junior are tonight from six to eight. Um, and so if you're not there, you need to get there. Secondly, uh, get ready for an un unforgettable evening at the, our food truck rollout uh, this year um, on the 12th, April 12th. Um, we will have, again, a number of um, food trucks, live music, um, refreshing beverages, et cetera. So that's April 12th from 5 to 8 here at City Park. 
Uh, the next Greer Farmers Market is April 14th from 11 to 2 here in City Park. Uh, celebrate Earth Day with us and uh, with Greer Relief featuring 40 vendors with food trucks, live music, and a showcase for local organizations. And finally, Greer, Glo Greer Goes Global with the International Festival on April 20th from 11 to 4. Uh, this is the time when we celebrate the cultures of the upstate with Greer's International Festival at Greer City Park. It's always a, a popular event. Um, it'll have uh, featured country tents, food trucks, vendors, sports, and an international market. So uh, that's something that uh, I know that everybody looks forward to annually, and that is right around the corner. Again, that's April 14th, uh, excuse me, April 20th from 11 to 4. Mr. Mayor, unless there's any questions, that concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Council, um, we, uh, we, we rather sadly have a appointment to the boards and commission on the Construction Board of Adjustments and Appeals. Um, Ralph Johnson, who uh, most of us knew, um, passed away recently and his term uh, would have expired on the 31st of 2024. Uh, we'll need uh, someone to fill his position on the Construction Board of Adjustments and Appeals. Um, I believe that uh, position comes with um, some qualifications, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, we'll look to staff for recommendations and or uh, council, if you'd like to um, make a suggestion that would need to uh, to go to staff. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I think uh, our building official, Ms. Ham, she has uh, recommended Keith Flynn, who uh, fits those qualifications required thank you sir we have a um a nomination uh do i hear a second second with that floor is open for discussion or questions if it's the keith flynn that i knew from a very long time ago he was the in my opinion the hardest hitting fullback greer high has ever seen <laughs> As my mother yeah, said, he was, part, he was part of a group of boys that when they ran by you, they sounded like a herd of elephants. So. <laughs> well, suppose, I guess that's all we need to know then. Yeah. Others. Is that the qualifications for being on this board? <laughs> it was Sparky. <laughs> um, others? Hearing none, Ms. Munoz. Mr. Edward? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mrs. Alber? Yes. Mr. Daner? Yes. Um, as we uh, go to old business, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Munoz for uh, stepping in tonight. Ms. Munoz is helping us with our uh, clerk's responsibilities, and we thank you for being here this evening. Uh, we'll move to old business, the uh, first of which is the second and final reading of ordinance number 15-2024. This is an ordinance to change the zoning classification of certain properties owned by Brian Fowler, Greg Taylor, and et cetera, custodian, um, F FBO, Gregory Taylor, and IRA located on North Main Street and Wildwood Drive from DRD to traditional neighborhood. Um, Ms. Cotty joins us for uh, this discussion. Any new or additional information in regards to the second and final reading of ordinance number 15-2024? No, sir, no updates. I'll entertain for the purpose of discussion, uh, motion to receive. So moved. And a second. Second. Floor is open for discussion. Questions? Comments? Hearing none, Ms. Munoz. Mr. Arwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mrs. Alber? Yes. Mayor Daner? Yes. Council, let's move to the second and final reading of ordinance number 16-2024. This is an ordinance to change the zoning classification of a certain property owned by Claudia C. Um, Ormelio and uh, Andres Ramirez located at 107 Mimosa Drive from MD, a medium, medium density residential to OP, office professional. 
Um, Ms. Cotty, any new or additional information in regards to the second and final reading of ordinance number 16-2024? No, there are no updates. Hearing none for the purpose of discussion, I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. Second. And a second. Floor's open for discussion. They move, if they're gonna develop this property, will they have to cut down the mimosa trees? <laughs> <laughs> um, I am not certain, but um, they, there is an existing house on the property that they're planning to convert to office, so they will have to do very little work with trees. Very good, good answer. Or site work. <laughs> I think as long as they don't add any more, they're okay. Just don't add any more. Yeah, okay. Just don't That's add any more. Mimosas will add their own. Yeah. Right. Others? <laughs> Questions? Comments? Discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Munoz? Mr. Irwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mrs. Alber? Yes. Mayor Daner. Yes. Council, let's move to the third item we have under old business. This is the second and final reading of ordinance number 17-2024. This is an ordinance to change the zoning classification of a certain property owned by Adelinda and Gar Adelinda Garcia located at 600 Hampton Road from MD to TN neighborhood. Uh, any new or additional information in that regard, uh, Ms. Cotty? No, there are no updates. Hearing no updates for the purpose of discussion, I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. Second. And a second. The floor is open for discussion. Questions? Comments? Hearing none, Ms. Munoz? Mr. Edward? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mrs. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Let's move to the last item of old business. This is the second and final reading of ordinance number 19-2024. This is the 13th supplemental ordinance providing for the issuance and the sale of City of Greer, South Carolina combined utility system revenue bonds in one or more series in the aggregate principal amount of not exceeding 21,700,000 authorizing the mayor or city administrator and the chairman or general manager of the Greer Commission of Public Works to determine certain matters with respect to the bonds, prescribing the form and detail of the bonds and any other matters relating thereto. For the purpose of discussion, I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. And, and a second. Floor is open for discussion. Questions? Comments? Hearing none, Ms. Munoz? Mr. Arwood? No. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mrs. Alber? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council, let's move to items of new business this evening. First of which is the Pavement Preservation Project, HA5 Surface Sealer. Mr. Grant, our city engineer, joins us for this discussion. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Um, we are continuing our pavement preservation efforts with uh, two proposed projects this year, uh, one with HA5 Surface Sealer and one with the Reclamite and Asphalt Juvenator. We've used both these products the past two years, so I'll continue that effort. Uh, the first one in your packet is the HA5 Surface Sealer. You should have a map in your packet and also on the screen here. Um, the blue highlighted subdivisions are uh, pro the HA5 areas proposed. Uh, these subdivisions were recently crack sealed, um, and it is common to surface seal after crack sealing. The total treatment is uh, 4.2 miles. The contractor is Holbrook Asphalt, and they are the only licensed applicator of this product in South Carolina. The proposed contract amount is $264,240.28, and it, it is funded from the Road Paving Fund, and staff requests approval to proceed with this uh, surface sealer application project, and I'll try to 
uh, answer any questions you may have. Council, this comes with a recommendation from staff. Do I hear a motion to receive? So moved. And a second? Second. Floor is open for discussion. Steve, how long have we been doing the surface sealer and the, the, the um, crack sealer? How, how many years are we into this? Uh, surface sealer, this is the third year. Crack sealing is really before I got here. I think we've been doing crack sealing. Yes, sir. And um, what is the using the surface sealer? How long is that supposed to extend the life of the asphalt? Seven to ten years. Okay, so we don't. You know, I guess we don't have enough data at this point, or enough nothing to observe that would say, yeah, this is working right now. No, sir. Not here in Greer, but just anecdotal data from other cities around the country is kind of the that's the norm seven to ten years so I guess probably next year we might be able to try to evaluate some of the roads we'll be halfway through that period right? right actually I've been I go through and check them every so often to see how they're holding up uh, the, the seat the HA5 actually looks very good um, good from two years ago others mr. Grant I'm <clears throat> Obviously, pleased to see several District 3 neighborhoods on these lists. Um, can you refresh my memory the difference between these two processes and products and why one's chosen, you know, one time or? Yes. The HA5, this one, it's typically for roads that are a little bit older, like in the 5 to 10 year range. Um, it is a surface sealer. It goes on the surface. Um, it's a little thicker than the other product and it lasts a little longer. And it is more expensive uh, per, per square yard. The Reclamite, which is coming next, that is a, a different product. It, it is applied to the surface. It actually penetrates into the, uh, the asphalt a quarter inch or so. Um, it is cheaper. Um, and it is for newer, uh, newer streets, like less than five years old, is the recommended time frame to apply that. And um, you get three to seven years out of that product. So just strategically di different in the timeline. Yes, sir. Of the, streets. Um, yeah. the next one, the, I'll make a comment. These are these streets uh, for the Reclamite are all were um, uh, brought into the city for maintenance in the last few years, so they're relatively new. They're, they're newer than the streets in this in this proposal. Got it. Thank you. The uh, the funds for both of these um, coming out of the road paving fund, it's already in there, or is that That's the new budget? It's already in the current budget. Yes, sir. The current. The one we're in right now. Yes, sir. Okay. Others? I just want to say thank you for staying on top of these roads and and especially doing things in the proper order, you know, where you crack seal first and then you go behind and using these rejuvenators and these surface sealers. Across the statewide, that does not happen within the proper time frame because it's within a certain time frame that these things need to occur. So thank you for uh, using our dollars in the proper manner. I really appreciate that. Sir, thank you. I was um, reminded earlier today of a um, former city engineer that um, caught this council's attention some 15 plus years ago. Um, I know there was a couple of us on the, on the council at that time that um, we, we had found it easy in the first couple of years of budgeting when things were tough to, uh, to cut our road paving money. And, um, I remember uh, a presentation that he gave that uh, used a, a, a chart to uh, show the conditions of our road and uh, how they were going to decline over the next 15 years with a, uh, a line that indicated the amount of money that we were putting towards repairing or replacing them uh, across that uh, to, to show us where we were going to be in 15 years. and. Uh, I think it caught our attention um, immediately because um, the lines only bisected in about the first quarter inch, and, and, and other than that, they were going in opposite directions at a, right. at a real fast pace. And uh, 
So uh, this, this council is to be commended for, and, and our engineering department as well too, for taking as many proactive um, uh, actions as we, can, as, as, as we can possibly take because um, just like the old commercial says, you can pay me now or pay me later. And uh, putting, it, putting it on the ground now is, uh, has really extended the life of, of, a lot of, our, of a lot of our roads. And I believe I see Mr. Smith sitting back there. Um, if you would stand, sir, um, I think that uh, I believe you are a commissioner now on the uh, penny road tax uh, that Greenville uh, County has uh, proposed and will be representing the Greer and upstate area in that effort. And uh, so we thank you for your service and your time. We realize that uh, that, that there's going to be a lot of hours spent on your behalf in the run-up to this uh, to this vote, and uh, we appreciate you taking that civil ser that civic service on for us. And thank you, sir. Yep, we appreciate it. Mayor, I would make one more uh, comment. You mentioned uh, the previous councils and this council. That was a, in my opinion, a wise decision because I was just looking at the data today from the recent, you know. Uh, study the the uh, contractor did the, the pavement evaluation and I was comparing the numbers from this year to four years ago and we're actually we're holding our own or maybe even the PCI maybe went up a couple of points in in the last four years so that's that's a that's a plus that's a thumbs up uh, for the money well I tell you the other thing that that is that has helped this effort and uh, again council is is to be commended on this but um, when we first started doing um, Taking what money we had and trying to figure out how to distribute it, it was a uh, it was a very political process, and uh, y'all can imagine um, what gyrations we went through with the limited amount of money that we had to figure out whose district was going to get what and whose district was going to get not and uh, that sort of thing. And um, I know there was a there was a lot of trading and swapping and backroom deals and that sort of thing. And I think one of the best things we ever did was to go to a, a subjective measurement of our roads and sidewalks um, using technology now. And uh, I do appreciate the efforts of our uh, staff to, uh, to maintain that. And uh, it's, it's, it's interesting how uh, technology is evolving to give us even more accurate information on our roads and sidewalks. Uh, over time, and we appreciate that. That was one of my planks in my platform that I ran on the very first time. Just, just take the political <laughs> process out of it. Let's, <laughs> well, there wasn't very much to go around to begin with. No, there wasn't, <laughs> but I tell you, it's, our, our roads have really, you're, yeah. you're right. I mean, all, all of council needs to be patting everybody on the back because we've put a big, made a big effort to uh, improve our roads, and it shows. It does. Well, let's move on then, because another item that we've got, well, we've got to take a, take a vote on it. Mm -hmm. um, other, other comments or questions in regards to uh, the pavement preservation project, the HA5 service sealer? Hearing none, Ms. Munoz. Mr. Erwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bredis? Yes. Mrs. Alber? <coughs> Mayor Danner. Yes. Let's move to the second item, which is the pavement preservation project known as Reclamite Rejuvenator. Mr. Uh, Grant? Yes, sir. Um, this project, if you see on your map, it's the uh, subdivisions highlighted in red. Um, these streets were all accepted into the city for maintenance in the last several years, so they're just slightly newer than the others. Uh, the total mileage being treated is 2.3 miles. The contractor is Pavement Technology Incorporated and they are the only licensed applicator in South Carolina and the Eastern U United States. Uh, the proposed contract amount is $38,556 and it is funded from the road paving fund. And you may recall from earlier uh, presentations about this that the APWA, the American Public Works Association, recommends that we spend 10 to 25% of our road maintenance budget on preservation related projects and these two projects will put us at 19%. So we fall in the, the 10 to 25 um, staff does request approval to proceed with this uh, rejuvenation application project. Comes with a recommendation from staff. I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. And a second. Second. Floor is open for questions. 
comments. Discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Munoz? Mr. Erwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mrs. Alber? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Council, the next item before you is the first and final reading of resolution number 5-2024, resolution to authorize an agreement with Mitsubishi Chemical America Incorporated. Mr. Merriman. Yes, Mr. Mayor, about, uh, well, almost 14 years ago now, this council uh, entered into an agreement with uh, Mitsubishi uh, for the uh, provision of fire services to <clears throat> Mitsubishi. In exchange, there was um, a monetary agreement along with the uh, purchase of fire apparatus. Uh, this is the next iteration of that agreement. It's very similar in nature for this, uh, the term will uh, uh, be a 10 year term and uh, the uh, and we have agreed with Mitsubishi um, on a number of financial matters, including an annual payment and uh, in this particular case, an annual payment and the donation of some real property for the extension of our public safety operations on that on that uh, property. Uh, Council, this comes with a recommendation from staff. Uh, do I hear a motion? Uh, this is the first and final reading of a resolution number 5-2024. For the purpose of discussion, do I hear a motion to receive? So moved. And a second. Second. Floor is open for dis discussion. Questions? Mr. Mayorman, yes, sir. Does um, let's say Mitsubishi ceases and um, another company they're, they're bought out, whatever? Do the terms of our agreement transfer to the new owner? There's not a transfer agreement. Uh, no, sir. No, the new owner would. Uh, we'd have to renegotiate that agreement with them. However, in this particular case, the real property will be deeded to the city and will remain the city's. Others? Comments? One question. I notice in the agreement it says we maintain an ISO rating, a certain level. Uh, do those ratings come along every year or is it every five years? I know we just recently did it, but. Yeah, the ISO, um, we do, they do a full review, if I'm not mistaken, every three. Questions? Comments? Discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Munoz? Mr. Erwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mrs. Alber? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. <laughs> Council, let's move to the first and final reading of resolution 10-2024. This is the allocation of Greenville County CDBG funds and the home funds for pro program year 2024. Mike Sell, the Deputy City Administrator, joins us for this discussion. Floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Ren and I met with uh, GCRA staff in early March to uh, review our program and the annual action plan. That action plan was presented to council or presented at a public hearing prior to council's uh, meeting uh, two weeks ago. The um, uh, budget and, uh, and funding allocations that were recommended during the public hearing are reflected in the resolution uh, that's before you tonight and uh, staff supports the recommendations as presented. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Comes with a recommendation from staff. It's the first and final reading of resolution number 10-2024. For the purpose of further discussion, I'll entertain a motion to receive. A motion. Have a motion to hear a second. Second. Floor is open for discussion. Questions? Comments? Hearing none, Ms. Munoz. Mr. Erwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mrs. Alber? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Thank you. 
Council, the fifth item before us this evening is a another resolution. This is the first and final reading of resolution number 12-2024. This is a resolution in consideration of a request for closure of an alley in the city of Greer and to refer the closure to the city attorney pursuant to city ordinance number 78-11. Mr. Merriman. This is the beginning of um, the process by which the city uh, takes action to close um, an alley or any other uh, publicly held um, easement. Um, in this particular case, uh, we've had a request from Mammonins uh, to uh, permanently close and deed any interest it may have uh, in a six foot alley located on property owned by the same. This is uh, identified on Spartanburg tax account tax map number 931314. And as you can see in the attachments in your exhibits, um, you'll see that this easement is, with, was, is entirely within the property um, uh, owned by the applicant. Uh, if council decides to um, vote in favor of this, it will then go to uh, the city attorney where we will schedule a public hearing on the closure and notify the adjacent property owners. It is important to note that uh, the utility companies uh, did not assert any objection or response to the closure. Council, this is a uh, resolution. This will be the first and final reading of resolution number 12-2024. Uh, for the purpose of discussion, I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. And a second. Floor is open for discussion. Questions? Comments? Hearing none, Ms. Ms. Munoz. Mr. Erwood. Yes. Mr. Booker. Yes. Mr. Hopper. Yes. Mr. Dumas. Yes. Mr. Bettis. Yes. Mrs. Alber. Yes. Mayor Danner. Yes. Uh, council, let's uh, move to item six, first and final reading of resolution number 13-2024. Resolution of the City of Greer, South Carolina, confirming its participation in installment purchase type arrangement and plan of financing relating to various capital projects in the city and other related matters. Mr. Merriman. Uh, yeah, Mr. Mayor, Council, this, uh, this is a resolution um, uh, effectively ratifying the um, action taken by the corporation for Greer, outlining the projects that were listed in the bond ordinance that y'all uh, took action on at the last council meeting. This is the final step in the process, but in, a, in effect, it is council agreeing that the projects listed in the <clears throat> resolution that the corporation for Greer took action on are the, um, uh, the projects listed in the original bond ordinance. Council, it is a resolution with the uh, first and final reading. This is resolution number 13-2024. I'll invite a motion for the purpose of discussion to receive. So moved. And a second. Second. Floor is open. Mr. Merriman, let me get straight on some things here again. Yes, sir. The corporation for Greer. Yes, sir. That's the same type organization as Greer Trust. Yes, sir. And the reason we didn't use Greer Trust was. Greer Trust at the time took um, no action on the resolution that was pre presented to them uh, initially. Uh, the sentiment, as I took it in the meeting, was that they did not have um, any desire to continue their role as the. Um, trust to take on these new projects. So it wasn't a lack of confidence in the in the amount of money in the projects, was it? I, it, it could have been part of it, yeah. I, I think that was part of it. I can't speak specifically to uh, their, their motivations for their desire. I think part of it was the amount of time they had spent on the trust. Um, I think some of it was, um, it could have been some lack of confidence in the financing structure could have been any number of things. Uh, could have been even uh, their, their level of involvement in the projects on, from the onset. Well, is this new entity legal? It is 100% legal. Because when we did the other, our esteemed legislator at the time pushed through legislation to prevent it from happening again because of the best 
corporation that the Greenville County Schools had set up. So he didn't want that happening anymore to circumvent basically our, our bond debt. This meets all requirements in the state code. Does so it? This is 100% legal, yes, sir. And it is, it is something that um, uh, is, these 501c3s are set up to issue the debt on behalf of cities and counties throughout the state. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think the school districts in, in total actually use the same 501c3 set up at the state level. So um, it, is, it is well within um, the uh, state code and- Well, they, they did it before anybody. The, the law came after that. That was the impetus for the law. This is, uh, this is legal. Yes, sir. Okay. Here's, here's one of my major questions. When we did Greer Trust, yes. council was fully involved mm -hmm. in the formation and the staffing of Greer Trust. Mm -hmm. I have yet to find out who was on the new body. I have no idea how it was done, when it was done, why it was done. I know why it was done now. But I know nothing about it. It says here that there was a resolution passed by this body already, and I haven't seen that resolution. I know, I know zero about this new entity. The resolution was in form in the, um, uh, the bond documents that, that or the, uh, the ordinance that was passed by council. The, the entity itself was formed by names drawn from council as we looked to set up the, the citizens groups, which was the executive committee, the steering committees, et cetera, for the four Greer initiative to give that citizen buy-in and involvement in the process. That's where we, those, those names were, were drawn from. And the, it, the, the sole purpose of the Corporation for Greer or any 501c3 that's set up like this is to issue debt on behalf of the city, full stop. And so this body was, was, was put together by those folks that um, will to serve this community and do that. Well, and, and we've talked a lot about communication here lately. I believe it was totally wrong not to have council more fully involved in the creation of this new entity and who is serving on it. Yes, I think that's just wrong. Because okay. we are the elected officials. We ultimately need to answer for what this body does. Um, I, just, I, I don't I, think it was done correctly. I will add that, that I was a primary part of that process. We took the list of names that were submitted by this body and I tried to, with only five, I couldn't get one from every district, but um, I tried to pick those folks uh, or to give information to Andy about who lived in what district and uh, even contacted some of, the, some of the folks by districts to make sure we had broad representation. Well, and I appreciate your effort for doing it, but it should have been done with the advice and consent of council, live and in person. And it would not have taken much to get us together to do that. Noted. I, I think for future um, that the reasoning to, that we had Greer Trust, or we still do have them, is so we could, and correct me if I'm wrong, but exceed our bonding capacity based on what the state said we could do. That's absolutely right. And so that's the, the, the purpose of that group. So probably it would be, and if, if I understand what went on with Greer Trust, yeah, I think there was some of, they didn't have faith in this, these, this, this construction projects that we want to undertake. Um, that, um, I guess they were using, they were going to try to use their influence the way they felt like they could on these projects when that's out of their scope and realm of their service. So I, I, it may be wise that what we do is we say uh, for this group and any other groups that are set up hereafter that um, that's all, that's the, basically that's your term of service. If, if the city decides to do more with this type of 501c3, then, then, then it will be a new group and council will appoint those folks. That way, 
you know, as a citizen, they, they, they can uh, oppose or they can, they can um, give their support. But as a group, they won't have that because we're the ones that have to make the, the decisions. And so... Not sounding that way to me. Well, it, I don't it, think we're going to have much decisions to be made. Well, I, I, I understand, but that's totally different than what I'm saying. I'm saying we take that... We take that, that committee's uh, or that group's, um, whoever it may be, um, have them serve for the purpose they were appointed to serve, period. And then so you don't have what we had just now is that they are, that, that, that committee or the, that group would cease to exist when that debt has expired but they would not be used to do any other uh, help with any other funding. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, and I, 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 I think you're right because, you know, one of the things that I did hear from the Greer Trust was, and in, in particular their chairman at one point in time was, you know, they, they, they've, in, they've invested 18 years at this point on, on that project and, you know, there was, Obviously, some angst about uh, committing to another 30 years on 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 a new bond, and so I, I, I think I think you're correct, Jay. I think you know we sunset these as as we do them. The other thing, and it's already been brought up, and and I guess to your point, Riley, you know there there is probably going to be as much or more involvement using using this using this vehicle differently than we have in the past uh, you know one of the one of the things that Greer Trust did was to actually get involved in deciding who the architect was going to be who the builder was going to be um, you know there was decisions along those lines that would be made and and I don't know at this point in time with the staff that we've got uh, in terms of of the diversity of things that they can handle, I think we'll probably be as much or more involved in some of those decisions uh, than than uh, than we were on you know on the original one. Now we obviously set the scope of the of of the project. We wanted to see it look like you know a mill. We wanted it to be brick and that sort of thing. But we weren't in on on some of the day to day stuff. And I don't imagine that we will be this time as either. But uh, I think that there's going to be a lot of opportunity for us to help shape uh, at least the recreation center. The others are pretty pretty well set at this point. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I agree. There's you know there's there's things that we can we can certainly do differently. There's things we certainly could have done differently. We we are we are where we are at at, at this point. And uh, you know the other thing that's going to happen is uh, those names that we solicited from y'all. Uh, we've also begun to break those up into committees as well, too. So you are going to be seeing some some committees that are going to help involve the public in this process as well, too. So um, we will be doing that as well, Mr. Bettis. Uh, just one other question. In, in, in terms of the uh, sports facility, do we intend or have we already thought about approaching some sponsors to defray the cost of that? Yes, sir, we have. And we are actually working. Uh, uh, one of the goals of the um, executive committee is going to be uh, primarily to help us identify those sponsorship opportunities, establish the value of those sponsorship opportunities, and then see. But yes, sir. That is 100% part of this. Going back to what the mayor was saying and in, in our involvement, uh, I most definitely want to be able to help recommend a method for picking basically a construction team of designers, the, the architect designers, uh, possible, uh, you know, uh, a list of contractors, that kind of thing. I, I think that's important. I, I, I will add this, uh, Mr. Airwood, and I, I, I appreciate that. And I think your insight in the construction business will be helpful. I think what we're going to do or have to do would be to establish those parameters about how we want to do it because there are already 
two or three schools of thought about different construction types and particularly in the management of those projects and that right. sort of thing. I think the one thing that we're going to have to do to keep us separated in terms of our obligation and roles as legislators as opposed to those that are on the staff, um, I'm averaging about one call a day or text a day from construction companies and already getting lunch invites and dinner invites <laughs> and that sort of thing. So share, share the wealth, you know. <laughs> I, for, well, I haven't taken any of them at this <laughs> okay. point. Good. Um, I, I think we're going to have to insulate ourselves from that because it would not that I'm insinuating that anybody here would help influence or want to push the influence of that, but we, we do, in our role, need to keep that separate from staff's role. Exactly. I, and what I'm, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that we insert ourselves into, um, I, I think we set the parameters of how staff looks at architects, how they look at uh, design, how they look at, at in choosing a contractor and the best method um, of how we will get numbers back to evaluate them uh, is it is it going to be um, you know just a hard bid or will it be something but because we have a project manager on staff and I think I've spoken to you and I know I've spoken to Mr. Merriman about it that there is a, a somewhat of a trend out there that uh, government entities are, they're finding that the, whatever form of the design build that's out there is not providing the savings that they, they expected. And there's, they're, they're turning away from some of that. Well, and I, I, I don't th think he would mind me sharing. I, you know, the, in the discussions that, that we have already had, um, you know, we've, we've had, one contractor say that if we didn't use this particular type of model that they wouldn't be bidding. Uh, we've had a contractor that when, when Mr. Merriman said, you know, we want to, to use local, use as many local subcontractors as we can, uh, you know, the first thing they wanted was some parameters about what local is and, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, so I think we're going to have to, we're going to have to, put the, the 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 railings on the yes. side and, and let yes. let them make the exactly. make a recommendation to us right. to approve others when it comes to updates on the project I, I mean I was on Facebook today I saw that we posted some information about the parking garage uh, how regularly do we do you foresee us maybe just getting a quick you know 10 minute update this is where we are how things are looking so there's two, two ways of going, well, there's a number of ways of going about doing that. Uh, the first and foremost is um, some formal project updates that we can bring to council through the administrator's report uh, once the projects are actually moving. Uh, that to me is probably the most timely and accurate because you'll get them, you'll get live fire every two weeks. And then of course, in our ordinary uh, just correspondence throughout the week, um, those are always just kind of stream of consciousness type things. So there'll be that. I also intend um, to work with our IT department to have live construction feeds so the public will be able to see the, the progress of these projects as they're, they're going on as well. Um, plus through our social media, be it website, be it um, you know TikTok, be it Instagram, all the things that we use to dedicate time and space on all of those things for those construction updates for uh, for the public, but the formal updates will come through me to you. Right. Now, I have a problem with any information, whether it's formal or informal, being released before council knows it. Say, for instance, on Facebook. I didn't know that. I don't have Facebook, so I believe that, that, that we have the ability to notify all the council, hey, this is going out today, because if I get somebody that says, hey, this was on Facebook, what do you know about I don't know anything about it. And I, that's, uh, yeah, I, I think any information before it goes out on social media um, 
I can assure you, Mr. Airwood, that this council does not know anything, does not not know something that's germane to your role as legislators before it goes out. I can. For what it's worth, the post was just, it was just showing preliminary renderings. It wasn't illustrating any material change to the project or the specs or anything that way. Okay. So have you seen any renderings? Uh, have you seen any renderings? I haven't seen any renderings online. I saw renderings months ago. But when we did all the press releases, all of those things were part of that. When we did the announcement, we had renderings for the public out there. All of those things have been presented in one way, shape, or form. I don't want to debate this because okay. we just go down the wrong path. <laughs> okay. And if and if council, you know, beyond updates, if the county, you know, and I'll, I know we're all busy, but if y'all want to do a quarterly workshop um, for for a progress report on any of the projects that are in the Fort Greer project and or other projects that are going on, we can accommodate, staff can accommodate that. We'll figure that out. We can come in at 5.30 and go to 6.30 um, and uh, pull in the folks that, uh, that need to be here if that's council's prerogative. Well, I guess the point, renderings. And, and, and I know renderings, they, that's subject to change before anything. But if someone is talking to me about what they saw on some outlet and they are either ha have questions or they don't like it or whatever, I don't know. I don't have, I, I don't have the ability and I'm not going to get that ability to um, look at that on Facebook. That's 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 my whole point. It's not it's not that, it, that there's anything going on that, that's in the shadows. It's just I think that that you know at least I think I believe that I need to know uh, so I can not stammer and stutter. I agree. Try to answer. That's fair. I agree. Well, Mr. Mayor, as part of this construction process, are, are we required to go by the state procurement system? In this particular process, we will follow our own procurement. So, in this case, uh, we will um, uh, we will after we determine the method by which we're going to deliver the project, whether it's seem at risk, whether it is a hard design bid build, uh, we will go through our process that will that will allow for that. But effectively, this council, the governing body, can establish that that procurement process. My recommendation would be. Um, at this time, to the mayor's point, um, what will help us is through the solicitation of expectations is uh, for any con contract that would come in, we establish minimums for WMBE, we, dis we establish minimums for local preference, um, and any other things that this council would like to see in that solicitation, I think I would, um, I would appreciate that guidance before as we craft the RFQ to go out for that. I think it's only fair to anybody that will apply that they know on the front end what those expectations are. Others, first and final reading of resolution 13-2024. No, excuse me. Yeah, third. Two the same number. Yeah, we got two that are the same thing. Uh, this is first reading, first. 13 2024. One's resolution, one's ordinance. One's ordinance. Okay. This is the resolution 13 2024. Excuse me. Comments? Questions? Discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Munoz? Mr. Arwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mrs. Alber? No. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council, the last item before us this evening is the first in, uh, is the first reading of ordinance number 13-2024. This is an ordinance to amend the City of Greer Unified Development Ordinance, the UDO, and action is required. 
Uh, we had a workshop uh, prior to our meeting tonight to go over some of those changes. For the purpose of further discussion, I'll entertain a motion to receive ordinance number 13 2024. A motion. And a second. Second. Floor is open for questions. I'd just like to make a comment from uh, going through the workshop when we were here. I, I just feel like that the, this blanket request from Upstate Forever is very cumbersome. I just, I think there's, there's a lot of detail and a lot of changes that are kind of mixed into this. And um, I'm, I'm not really huge on the, you know, that change from the 30 inch to the 60. Uh, the piece about uh, engaging a certified arborist uh, there were there were two or three items in here that just seemed kind of cumbersome and, and really seemed to put the brakes on an already difficult policy to navigate. I don't have an issue with you know what you've requested as staff and and I I thought that uh, what was recommended by the designer on here was palatable. I, I just I wasn't huge on just the whole blanket upstate forever piece. I mean if we took those off you know one or two as, as we go based on you know, issues or things that we've run into or feedback, I, I think that would be a little bit easier, but um, I just, I think it's too much. Is your motion to exclude the Upstate Forever suggestions for now? Well, I think the, the motion we just made was to have discussion on this, is that correct? So if, if I was going to make a motion, it would be to amend uh, it'd be to amend the ordinance uh, to just to approve staff's recommendation and to approve um, this DPR designer's recommendation, but uh, to exclude the Upstate Forever recommendations. Without malice. Without malice, absolutely. I, <laughs> I, I just, I feel like it's just, it's too much. I, I think it's just... <clears throat> It's just a sweeping change that would require a, a great, a great deal of involvement on the front end, and it would it would really slow down the process, which, which I already think is cumbersome enough. I agree whole wholeheartedly. Staff doesn't have any concerns with that. Um, the only one, um, the current language regarding the heritage trees in the ordinance, um, I suspect that you guys may want to strike that language. Um, so upon, or at least take it out for now while we look at alternative language, um, it does not appear that there's any remedy. So it is saying that you cannot remove a tree of 60 inches on a site. Um, so I would probably recommend that even if you do decide to exclude Upstate Forever's recommendation that we maybe include uh, either striking the heritage language altogether or having it um, mirror the significant tree language, which is right before it, which requires kind of an extra replacement. Well, there has to be some type of uh, alternative, you know, to if you, if you take the if it's a 30 inch tree or a 60 inch tree or whatever, I mean, you know, it's kind of like carbon credits, you know, you, yes. it's, you, you have to have some type of exchange. You can't just have a blanket policy that says you can't c take down a tree if every tree on that's between 30 to 60 inches, then you have a lot that you can't develop. Agree completely. And I, I believe this was an oversight. Um, so right now, the way the ordinance reads is if there are trees over 60 inches that are native species, those are considered heritage and cannot be removed. But why don't we, so, if you're so inclined to remove the recommendations from Upstate forever, because this is only the first reading, the, that what's in place now would not be taken out until the second reading is approved. So I guess they staff could come back uh, by second reading with a solution for that. Mm -hmm. For just the heritage one or others? 
I think I, I, I think I have heartburn too with the um, the certified arborist piece that's in here um, about the oversight with inspections. I just I think it could become very cumbersome, and you'd have to get them engaged, and then have to come back to you to make sure it was approved. And and I think the mayor was making some good points too about plant materials and you know that requirement with the bonding and different things like. I I think there just needs to be some of this really needs to be filtered and. <clears throat> Well, you said no update proposed. Does that mean no update to our ordinance or no update to what they suggest? No update to the ordinance okay, so to address their concerns. So no update proposed means forget that one. Yes. Yes. Mr. Grant, correct me if I'm wrong or if you, if, if you know. It's, it's my understanding that Public Services Department uses an arborist now for at least all of our downtown trees in terms of health checkups and fertilization and, and some other things that are going on. Are, are they not arboflora? Do not, don't they? I do know our- Mr. Sale, yeah. and I, I, I do know we have an arborist that we contract with for care for the trees downtown. Yes, sir. And I think to your point, thank you. I think to your point, you know, it's, it's somatics in some regard. You know, is a heritage tree going to be a 60 inch diameter or a 30 inch diameter? Well, you know, I had a, I had a professor at Clemson that said no tree is irreplaceable. I mean, you, you know, uh, if, if it's a 30 inch tree and it gets cut down, I think our ordinance calls for you've got to replace X number of inches for every inch you cut down or whatever. So with significant trees, which are 20 or more, it does. So the, the way it's written right now is a heritage tree with over 60 cannot be cut down. So I am, I am very much agreeing with council that we should, even if we scrap other amendments, that we should amend that language at second reading. Okay, let's, council, let's, let's, let's consider this. There's, there's obviously a lot to be, to be digested here. Um, why don't we entertain a, uh, a, a motion here to hold this matter over? How would that, how would that be at this point? Would that be fair enough? Uh, the motion was made by. Motion received was made. The first. I think it was Albert. Ms. Ms. Albert. Ms. Albert. And then seconded by Mr. Booker. Would you do that, please? Would you be willing to amend your motion oh, to I'm table? To, oh, okay. Yeah, if you would, if if you would amend your motion uh, to table, okay. then we'll I'll go from there. Table. Okay, and seconded by Mr. Booker. Yep, I'll do that. You'll make. Okay, so at this point, then. Um, First reading of ordinance number 13-2024. Um, we have a motion and a second to, uh, to hold, let's uh, hold this over to table this motion uh, until we've got more information at this point. Is that suitable with council? Mm -hmm. Is that understandable to staff? Yes, all right, so I think I have very good guidance for the Upstate Forever comments. Were there any other staff-initiated comments that you felt that you needed additional information or you'd like to see alternative language? If so, let's contact our planning staff, okay? Yes. All right, 
Uh, at this point, then, we have an amended motion for first reading of ordinance number 13-2024. The motion is to hold this matter over or to table this matter until um, it's brought back before this body. Uh, we all clear on that? Ms. Moon, yes. Mr. Irwood. Yes. Mr. Bettis. Yes. Mr. Hopper. Yes. Mr. Dumas. Yes. Mr. Did I miss one? Mr. Booker. Booker. Yes. Mrs. Albert. Yes. Mayor Danner. Yes. Keep that on our feet. Make it show her away. That's we right. appreciate her effort, and we, th job. we thank you for filling in. We do indeed. <laughs> we better the second time. <laughs> Council, we have no matters for executive session. We stand adjourned.